Hey y'all. Oh, that's a weird. All right. Hello everybody. No. Hey y'all. I'm Vaughn. I am a tasty show producer, and I'm gonna show you why I love making mesmerizing dessert videos. Strawberry cheesecake macarons was really like my first big video here at Tasty. I was a French and film double major, so this is really like literally the perfect job for me. I've always taken a really strong liking to desserts in general. I worked at a bakery after I graduated from college. I've always loved la cuisine française, and so I uh, applied for this job at Tasty and was so nervous because I was like, this is the perfect job for me. I have to get it. And when you apply for a job at Tasty, they ask you to make a top-down food video. And I think that I should make a matcha ginger citrus macaron, which is like the craziest flavor combination that no one on Tasty or none of our Tasty audience would really like or get unless it were like Taste Japan or something. I saved all of my macarons and I actually brought them in to my in-person interview. They were like, this kid is the biggest suck up of all time. Like, who is he? And then they tasted my macarons. They were like, actually, these are pretty good. We should give him a second chance. And thankfully they did give me a second chance. And I knew when I started here that I had to make a macaron video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find a flavor combination that the tasty audience is gonna like strawberry cheesecake. So on top of this crazy flavor combination, I really want to make them look swirled like a strawberry cheesecake. So what I did was I combined the two colors of batter and I piped both of those into a bigger piping bag and then I swirled them around. And people were watching me in the Tasty Studio like, what the hell is this kid doing? I didn't have them taste them yet because I wanted to like save them all for the end. And then they tasted the macarons, I passed them out. And that was really like my first time where I felt validated almost in the Tasty Studio. It was a really gratifying feeling. And then when the video came out like a week later, I remember being on a plane from DC and I saw that the video went up and I was like, okay, I gotta turn my phone off, I'm on a plane. Flew back, landed in New York City, and it had like 10 million views when I landed. I was like, yes, this is awesome. This is like the high that you get when you make a viral video. It was really like my first time where I felt like, okay, this is where I'm meant to be. I know that this is going to be a place that I'm at for a really long time. And we ate macarons for like four weeks after that because I made like 150 of them. When I started as a Tasty producer, we had to make two one-pot recipes, and then our third video had to be like a mashup. I really wanted to make a dessert because I love sweets. I'm a huge sweet tooth. It was winter time, so I was feeling something s'moresy. Uh, <laughs> s'moresy a word? I don't know. I was like, I want to make something s'mores flavored, and I want it to be good for a party. So I... <laughs> came up with this wacky idea of s'mores cheesecake pops. When I first tested this recipe out, I made my no-bake cheesecake base, and then I broiled a whole bunch of marshmallows. And when you're making a tasty video, you're not exactly able to cook your recipe all the way through without stopping, because you have to like change your cameras, change your lenses, get different angles from the side. So I go and I get the marshmallows out of the oven, and then I'm like, oh wait, I have to do my graham cracker base. So I make my graham cracker base and then I go to put my marshmallows into the batter and they're like brick solid. I ended up having to do more marshmallows and then because the marshmallows were so hot it made my batter soupy and I was like what the hell is going on? So I learned from my mistakes and I let the broiled marshmallows cool for three to four minutes. I just had to get like really fun with those chocolate dipping shots because there's absolutely nothing sexier than beautiful shots of melted chocolate. It ended up tasting like toasted marshmallow cheesecake, which was awesome. Tasty 101 is really, really near and dear to my heart. My boss was essentially like, we don't have anybody doing just YouTube videos. We've tried out a couple things on YouTube, but we really want a dedicated team of producers to just play around with different long form recipe videos, long form content in general for a YouTube audience. And when we were thinking about shows, it was a no brainer. Tasty 101 had to be one of our shows. Everybody knew it, people loved Claire's voice. We had a new uh, person in LA, Alexis, who was also really gifted with recipes and had a great voice as well. People really loved Claire's voice. It's really just another flavor enhancer. 
So when we were thinking about a first season of Tasty 101, we were thinking really broad. What do people really need to know about? I quickly learned that making long form content, especially Tasty 101, is a whole different ball game than just like your normal recipe video. They require a lot of planning, a lot of recipe development, because what we're putting out there is what we think the Tasty's perfect recipe for something is. So Claire and I took a couple days to come up with like the perfect recipe for a pound cake. We made all these like tarts and muffins and we had some like croissant that we made and things like that. And we just like had a smorgasbord, smorgasbord? smorgasbord of desserts out on this table. In making that video, I just remember like having so much fun with playing around with those beauty shots, getting those kind of cool push-ins and flyover shots and like really showcasing how sexy desserts can be. We're able to really highlight the most amazing aspects of one thing and make it look incredible. So when we were thinking about season two, I was like, look, one of my passions in life is decorating cake. And I love decorating cake. I personally will spend like hours on my phone at night when I'm trying to go to sleep watching cake decorating videos on Instagram. It's like an actual problem. Um, but I really wanna do a five beautiful ways to decorate cake video because it's something that people love watching. We need to capitalize on this. So Claire and I came into the Tasty Studio one morning and what started off as like a cake decorating video with just a few tips and tricks quickly turned into like a, we're gonna make five unreal cakes. Claire and I like, we're pulling our hair out and about to pull each other's hair out for this video. But by the end, when we were going through and doing like the voiceover and everything, we were like, wow, this was so much fun. And this is something that we're pretty good at. So we're gonna continue to do this, which is why when season three came about, we were like, all right, gotta do desserts again. Let's do brownies. I worked with one of our recipe developers, Sue, and we just made like, eight batches of brownies one day and it was the best day of my whole entire life because we were just eating brownies all day long. That's really the best part about being a Tasty producer is that you just get to eat food all day long. When we do a Tasty 101 video, it's always kind of like, what is that one crazy technique that people are gonna go and watch this video and be like, whoa, that is a cool thing that I've never seen before. We both remember this recipe where the baker like takes the pan of brownies and just whacks it against the table halfway through baking, turns the sheet of brownies around and puts it back in the oven. So it gets like that nice crackly top, keeps them really, really moist, but not dense. Like these are literally the best brownies I've ever had in my whole entire life. And I can firmly say that the people of BuzzFeed New York who got to try these brownies said the exact same thing. In Tasty 101 too, what I loved was that I was able to use a lot nicer cameras and I was able to showcase what I could do in terms of like slow motion filming and flyover shots and everything like that, which really inspired me. And I think that that's one of the big reasons why we made Made by Hand. Tasty's Made by Hand is a very artistic look and insight into how everyday people make something by hand. Exacting that human emotion, exacting that human condition from the passion that somebody has when they make this thing thousands of times every single day. And then um, came Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. A A B A H M. Yeah. <laughs> Hey Pam, I wanted personally to do this tea house in New York that I had been to before. What really drew me to that was they had these really traditional Japanese tea cakes and pastries, but then they also had this really cool modern take on pastries as well. And I thought that that was a perfect way to showcase the juxtaposition between the old and the new. And when I dug a little deeper and I like went there to talk to the people who owned it, I found out that not only was it like a completely family run business, but it was also like women doing these incredible things. And I was like, this is perfect. I am so into it. Uh, when I graduated from school, I moved to Thailand for like seven months to teach English. And my favorite thing to do after school would be to play badminton with my students. And then I would go and get like an iced Americano and a little matcha tea cake from the cafe across the street. When I went to the tea house here in New York, it really brought back those memories for me. And that was when I was kind of like, food is a memory. 
Every single flavor, every single taste, every single ingredient that you've ever experienced is and can be tied to a specific moment in your life. And I think that that emotion was something that was super touching to me when I went there and I just got this rush of nostalgia. And I think that that's something that was really cool with that video was that we were able to learn that food is more about just the way something tastes or the way something looks. It's about the story behind it. From there, we saw that people seem to really like the human element behind all of these stories. I've gotten to meet and talk to these amazing people that have dedicated their lives to making one thing. It's really special to see someone with a passion so deep and so ingrained in themselves that they're committing their whole entire lives to perfecting one craft. I think that that's what really resonates with our audience the most is that like food is inherently connected to memories. When I get in the kitchen and bake something, I'm automatically brought back to my childhood, getting up on like a rainy Saturday morning and baking with my mom and my grandma in the kitchen. I've had a lot of life experiences. You know, I've lived in three different countries, moved up to New York City when I was 23 without a job, living in this tiny cramped apartment and it was negative 10 degrees in January. That's like the time in my life that's connected most to like instant ramen. No, I'm <laughs> when I go out and I film a mesmerizing dessert video, I don't just go and say like, okay, I'm gonna set the camera here and I'm just gonna let it roll. Our food and the way that we showcase food is done from that human perspective. Uh, and we try to always keep in mind how is this gonna make somebody feel when we put it out. I always try to think about how is something gonna play into not just the overall video, but like the psychology of the video. How is that gonna make you as a viewer feel when you see this 70 year old woman who's dedicated her life to making mochi? And honestly, that's the coolest part of my job is seeing in the comments and getting direct messages of like, hey, I saw your brownie video, I made your brownie recipe, I loved it, I'm gonna put pretzels on top of it and bring it to my cookie swap this month. That's the most gratifying thing is to be able to see like the fruits of our labor, or in my case, the cakes of our labor. <laughs> that was really dumb. <laughs> oh.